we've had some name calling this past week. Want to start there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I love it. I mean, let, let them scream and holler at each other. There you go. <laughs> the topic of conversation this week so far has been about the on-track incidents between David Rudiman and Kyle Busch last Sunday at Kansas. 52 laps into the race, Rudiman running 11th is tapped by Kyle Busch and crashes. After repairs, about 100 laps later, Rudiman slides up into Kyle off turn two, and the 18 is forced into the wall with the apparent payback. Here are both drivers' comments on the matter from Friday. I race guys how they race me, and I've always gotten raced really, really hard against David Rudiman, and I've gotten no room, no slack, no nothing. I got into him, which was my fault, not meaning to, but why would I apologize to a guy that races me like an every week? You know, no point. Nothing would have happened if he had to wreck me. It's the bottom line. Well, it's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's just all about respect. And the fact of the matter is, he went down there, he wrecked me, 50 laps into the race, backed my car in the fence, and never said anything about it. So he didn't care. Okay, first, <laughs> your opinions on what happened in Kansas and what they said. Well, they're always going to say stuff like that. They're going to defend each other. But I'm kind of on David, David Rudiman's side on this particular issue. Look, I've been in that position before where I've been on the racetrack early in a race, and a guy comes in behind me too hot, whether he meant it or not, hits me in the back, puts me in the wall, and my day's over. So I got a real problem with somebody that runs over me from the backside and sticks me through the fence. And so this particular issue, I'm on David Rudiman's side. Yeah, I think the incident is very clear on both sides what happened and who did what and who didn't do what. I think what could have quashed this whole thing is once Kyle got into him if his spotter had went over to David Rudiman's spotter and said look it was an accident we're sorry we didn't mean to run over you you know give us a break I think it would have been fine but since nothing was said I think David took it personally and had to retaliate in order to hold his ground I, I want to broaden out the circumstances surrounding the whole incident Rudiman and Ben knocked around a little bit the preceding couple of races first in New Hampshire it was Kevin Harvick in the 29 who got into the side of Rudiman a little bit and uh, roughed him up then the following week at Dover, it was Ryan Newman in the 39 who got into Ruderman and knocked him up into the wall. So at Kansas, after he got hit by Kyle on Ruderman's radio, uh, there came a little bit of traffic that sounded like this. He just run right over us. Portion will be out. Either you start wrecking people back or find somebody else to do this. All right, that was Rudiman's crew chief, Rodney Childers. How much of the payback was the crew chief? How much of it was just the fact that it was Kyle Busch that, that hit him? And there's some history, excuse me, history there. Yeah. And how much of it goes back to Bristol when <laughs> Rudiman and Kyle Busch raced for the win? And after the race, Kyle basically said David would have won if he'd driven his car differently. It's all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let, let me tell you something. As you watch these two guys, David Rudiman throughout the garage area is known as a guy who will chop you off just a little bit getting into the corner. That doesn't make him a bad guy. As a matter of fact, David's one of the, my favorite racers, but he is hard to pass and get around getting into the corner. So that's why we've seen some incidents with Kevin Harvick, Ryan Newman, who's another guy who races people very, very hard. So David is not without fault in some of those things that have happened to him in the past. The incident with Kyle, though, was just a situation where Kyle ran over him, made a mistake, and David had to retaliate in order to get some respect and gain some respect from Kyle Busch. Brad, David Rudiman, in my opinion, is a really cool guy. He's a real great guy. He's a real quiet guy. He yeah. doesn't say much. And I think he would let this go uh, if the crew chief when he got on the radio and said hey look man I'm tired of this I'm gonna quit you unless you go out there and do something about it I'm with Brad yeah. if Kyle Bush's guys would have went over and said hey man I'm sorry That'd have been it just up. happened it had been over yeah. but they didn't and that's All the right. problem now I want to wrap the whole thing up okay. since the chase began we've been talking about chasers and non chasers and how they race together on the track and in 2010 the year of the let them race <laughs> Mix it all together. What are your big picture thoughts on the whole thing? Well, my big picture, th I start thinking about respect. I mean, that's what runs my mind, respect, because these guys, have, everybody's had the chance to get in the chase, right? Okay, 12 of them made it in the chase. They work hard to get in there. The rest of them could have done that. Now they're in there. Now, if I was out there still driving, I would give those guys in the top 12 some respect. I wouldn't really race them any different, but I wouldn't rough them up either, you know? So I'd have respect with those guys every lap. See, I, I don't 100% uh, uh, agree with that. I think 
you race a guy now the way he races you, period. And I think that's what we see with some of these guys. A guy racing for 30th place or the top 35 position, that is as important to him as any of these guys racing for a chase championship. So I think you, if you have a tough time with a guy throughout the regular season, it should be a tough time when you get to him now. What do you mean you don't agree with me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> about 100%, about, about 85. Right. I was watching the tributes to John Lennon's 70th birthday last night in the song, Give Peace a Chance, was flashing in my mind about today's show. Uh, let's talk about the next part in the whole Kyle Busch story from last Sunday, which was the effort by the driver, the crew chief, and the team to minimize the damage after the accident involving their car. The double O of David Rudeman, contact with the 18 of Kyle Busch. Is this payback? I have a serious problem with what just happened. The car is destroyed. If there's anybody in the garage area, get ready. Well, I bet you we're going to be going that way. You know we're going to go several laps down if we change that housing. Even if we got to limp around, we'll still have a better point today. All right, now I want to bring in our champion driver, Dale Jarrett, and champion crew chief, Andy Petrie, from up in the booth to focus on the 18's effort post-crash and how they went about their business. DJ, what would you see? Uh, very impressive, first and foremost. But what I saw is a maturation process of Kyle Busch. We've seen this uh, not just last weekend, but kind of coming. And I think this is going to be something that is certainly going to benefit in his quest to win a championship. Now, it hasn't taken that fire and desire to win and want to be the best out there. That, it hasn't taken that away from him, but he's understanding the situation more and how if he gets upset, that could hurt him in certain situations. So he kept his cool, could have been a lot worse than what it was, and I really like what I'm seeing from Kyle Busch. I think it's going to give him a chance to win that championship he so wants, whether it's this year or in the coming years.